Okay, this is my claim. Whenever we have a nested square root, that's why we have the expression square root of a plus square root of b. In fact, we can actually write this as the sum of two square roots. So, I will tell you, this can be written as square root of x plus square root of y for some x and y, and x and y will be based on a and b. Well, how do I know this is true? Well, the truth is, in fact, I did a video on this already from scratch, right? So you go ahead and check it out. In fact, that video has over 1.5 million views right now. I have no idea how that happened, but anyway. So this right here is true. I'll show you guys how we can end up with that formula so that later on, if you encounter this kind of expression, you can use the formula and end up with this in no time. Here we go. Let's of course go ahead and square both sides right here. In that case, we see that the left hand side is just going to be the inside, namely a plus square root of b. And then for the right hand side, let's square this. Let me first do this square, which is going to be just x, and then square that, which is just y. And then I will do 2 times this and that, which is just square root of x, y, like that. Now, have a look. On the left hand side, the a does not have the square root. On the right hand side, the x plus y does not have the square root. So that means this has to be the same as that. And that's the first piece of information that we have. Then the x plus y has to be equal to a, right? Now, you see that right here, we have b inside of the square root. This is x, y inside of the square root, but we have a 2 in front. So, we have to do the following. Bring the 2 inside and look at this as square root, but the 2 inside of the square root becomes a 4, and then of course you still have the x, y. Well, this will tell us b has to be the same as 4xy. So that's another information that we have. 4xy is equal to b, and then you see that we have a very nice system of equations that we can use to solve for x and y in terms of a and b. So of course, let's just do the work. Let me isolate the y right here so we know y is equal to a minus x and put that right here. So we are saying 4x times a minus x has to be equal to b. Now, this is just going to be a quadratic equation, and let's do this in your head. You see, this is 4x times negative x, that's negative 4x, but I don't like to have a negative in front of the x squared. So let me put that term to the right-hand side, but I'll write it down first, though. So we get positive 4x squared. Next, this times that is positive 4ax. Bring that to the other side, becomes negative 4ax. And then this right here is on the right hand side already, so it's positive b. And let me just put on equal to zero right here. Quadratic equation, quadratic formula in action, of course. So we know that x is equal to, well, we have negative this, which is negative 4a, and then plus or minus square root of this square, which is negative 4a, and then square that, and then minus 4 times this and that. So of course, let's put on the 4 and then the b right here. And then all, all, over, all over 2 times this, which is 2 times 4, like this. Now, let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. You see this is 4a plus or minus. Here we have 16a squared minus 16b. Both of them have 16. Factor that out. In the square root, square root of 16 is 4. So I will just put that out and then square root of a squared minus b all divided by 8. And now here's the issue. I know I can reduce the 4, but for the x, do I pick the positive or do I pick the negative? Hmm, I don't know. Well, actually I do know. The truth is, if you pick the positive for x, then the y will be the negative. Likewise, if you pick the negative for x, then the y will be positive. Why? You can look at this, because the order of x and y doesn't matter, right? But I will demonstrate though. Suppose you have x being equal to, let's reduce the full out already, and I'll just have a plus square root of a squared minus b all divided by 2, right? I'm not going to make any careless mistakes in this video. I hope not. Anyway, if this is x, well, we know that y will be a minus x, which is going to be a plus square root of a squared minus b all over 2. And as you can see, of course, we have to get a common denominator. 
you put a 2 here and a 2 here, 2a minus a is plus dA, see? But don't forget you have to subtract minus plus d is minus. See? That's what I told you. So you will see that if x is this, then y will be a, but you have minus, and then you have the square root of a squared minus b or over 2, like this. And here we have it, this right here, it's a nice formula for this kind of thing. So now, what good does this do? Well, if you know this, you can actually come up with a lot of nice expressions so you can impress your cats. Are you impressed? And of course, we should have nice numbers for x and y, and in order for us to have that, of course, this part has to be nice. Well, let me give you guys an example. Hmm. Of course, in order for us to have nice number right here, we want to have a squared minus b to be a perfect square, and let me just write it as k squared. And because I'm coming up with an example, it's easier for me to start right here. Let's say I want to end up with 9. So, what square minus what will be 9? A good choice is 49 minus 40 will be 9, right? So, of course, we know that we can just pick A to be 7 and B to be 40, and then I can throw that in for you guys. Based on this, we will know that if we have square root of 7 right here, and then plus square root of 40 inside, I know I can simplify this a little bit, up to you though, but I'll just keep it right here. Based on what we did, this right here, we know it's going to be what? Well, if you work that out, this right here will be 9, you can just put it right here, square root of 9 will be 3. And then you put a 7 right here, so 7 plus 3 is 10 divided by 2. That means we will have square root of 5. And then we just have to add square root. And let's work out the other part, which of course we know this right here is 3, and then again 7 minus 3 is 4, 4 divided by 2, which is of course 2. And of course you can go ahead and verify this on your own, whichever way that you like. So, I think this is so 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 cool, right? Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Black pen, red pen, black pen, red pen. But since calculus teacher uses black and red, he does math for fun. If he cues get done using complex numbers, doing marathons. And as always, that, that, that is. is